Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. We are going to do a follow-up video to a video I released a while back about the Pac-Man machine here. Um, I posted a video about how to easily connect a CGA monitor to your Raspberry Pi. Well, I have since replaced my method I have and I have a much clearer picture right now. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps to get that looking as good as it does. So what you see here is a Pac-Man cabinet that I purchased a few years ago. Um, I probably had it for about 10 years now. Um, it was empty when I bought it, um, had a monitor, no board. Um, so I guess that was really it. It was really just boardless, not empty, but um, it still has the original harness in it. It's still running the original power supply for Pac-Man. And um, I had the original control panel still. Um, I actually, took the original Pac-Man joystick and uh, kind of modified it so it would fit the 60 and one like multi-game board um, control panel that I got from Arcade Shop a few years back. Got the two and a quarter HAP trackball and uh, this really nice overlay that matches from, uh, I believe it was from this old game. I think it was uh, some extra stock he had laying around. So anyway, uh, sit tight and I am going to show you how we get such a clear picture on a Wells Gardner K4901 19 inch raster monitor from a Raspberry Pi. So one thing I wanted to show everybody is, you know, this has a Raspberry Pi in it and something I did to just make the installation simpler without having to splice into the original wiring was, I'm gonna try not to blind everybody here. I have my Raspberry Pi using one of these light socket adapters right here. Um, that's coming right off the AC. That's your uh, five volt power supply for your Raspberry Pi. So as you can see, I have it cased here with a fan just to kind of keep it cool. I have not overclocked it. This is a three, not a three B plus, just a three B. Um, so it can't, you know, I can overclock it. I probably should but I haven't done that. So I just wanna show my quick setup I have here. So I've got an HDMI adapter going to VGA. I've got my three and a half millimeter audio out, and that's going into this board right here. And this board, try to focus in on that. So this board right here was actually the internals of an external speaker I had. Um, again, this is like all just a project and I got it together and it all works, it works great. Um, I, you know, I need to clean it up a little bit, but, um, as far as it, you know, it works, does its job. So with that said, um, this was the internal of a speaker, uh, which is plugging in to the Raspberry Pi. And then I soldered the speaker output into the single speaker, since it's a mono cabinet. It's just taking one channel. Um, power's there, it's always on. And you know, it sounds, I'm gonna go ahead and just start a game. So. Sounds great. It's loud. I'm just gonna leave it playing while we talk. So that's how I'm actually powering this device without splicing in anything. These adapters are great. I've used them for a couple different things. I have LED bulbs in here so they don't burn your hands. Super bright, but they also put off a very good white glow on the marquee. So uh, right now I don't have the marquee in. I've got a keyboard up here just for some testing purposes. I uh, just started doing this. Um, new modification and I've been testing a lot of different things. So with that, let's move on to the video portion. All right, so let's talk about my old setup first. So my old setup, as you saw, I was using this little adapter board here. And what this board is, is a GBS uh, 8100. And what that does is it accepts a VGA input here on the side, and then it can output either through VGA or output through this connector, which you can connect to a CGA monitor, um, which is what we're doing. So that's what I had um, connecting to this before. This required five volt power, which you see here. Um, I had this little Molex, I just hacked together, threw it on, and um, had it plugged into a little uh, hard drive power supply thing in the back of the cabinet. Um, so I'm no longer using that, which is great. Um, this v VGA cable was what used to connect to the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, it's not connected now and I'm getting a fantastic picture. 
Um, over here, this is my IPAC 2. My wiring's horrendous, so please ignore it. Um, this was for an old, an old jam harness I had in here. I didn't know if I was gonna put it back in, so I just left everything connected. Um, but anyway, uh, this is my IPAC 2. It's supporting my trackball as well as my direct connections to my joysticks. So that is what I'm using for my interface board. And it works great. It does everything I need it to, and it has way, uh, way more buttons than I need for this cabinet. But I bought it in case I wanted to upgrade in the future. I have it already, and I don't need to purchase a new device. So one issue with this device is this device has limited, limited range, limited support, really. Um, so it gets 5-volt power, but it has no onboard memory. So after you connect your monitor, you could get it set up and it would look great. Um, but most of the time the picture wouldn't fill the monitor all the way. But if you mess with these manual buttons right here, you can bring up an on-screen display, you can stretch and fill, and then this button will actually like double the screen size. So you, you just kind of, it's like a toggle switch. And uh, you could, you know, mess with that and you could get it looking decent. Um, and I say decent because the screen would be full. You'd have a picture very playable, but you just, it was never sharp. It was kind of blurry, just slightly blurry. The colors were a little washed out, uh, not very bright. And it just didn't look as good as, you know, most arcade games look. So, um, and the biggest frustrating part was once you get it set up, you power off the machine. The next time you power back on, you'd have to do it all over again because this doesn't have anything on board. Uh, the only way you'd be able to do that is to have some sort of power supply, you know, keeping five volts going to this at all times. Um, at least that was the only thing I could think of, but I didn't want to go that route. So that is why I went to the new method. All right, so now we're in the back of the cabinet. So let's talk about the new method. So up here, you can see this is where my Raspberry Pi was up in the marquee box. This is the VGA cable. You can see right there, it's coming off of that connector off the Raspberry Pi right here. So what I did was I made a VGA breakout cable. So this cable right here, excuse the shoddy work, I couldn't find my electric tape, so I had to use some other uh, vinyl tape I had. Uh, anyway, I took this cable, I cut the end off of it, and inside you should have like 15 little wires inside of it. Um, majority of them are ground, but what you need to look for is the red, the green, the blue, the one ground, the um, grounds for the colors. So red, green, and blue each have their own ground that you should find once you splice the wires. And then you'll need your negative and horizontal sync. So for this particular monitor, which is a K4901, uh, it uses the composite sync going into the negative side. So what that does is it loops over into horizontal and negative through one wire. So the way you wire that is you just tie the horizontal and the vertical together coming off of the VGA cable and you tie those into the one cable going to your sink. And then obviously ground goes to black and then red, green, and blue go to red, green, and blue. So this cable, when you do that, it does take some knowledge of using a multimeter. So you can um, use your ring test to figure out which pin is which cable. The color ones were pretty obvious because they were red, green, and blue, and they were thicker than the other cables. So those were easy. Finding the sinks was a little bit harder. Um, I had to look at the pin out and then I just had to strip wires until I found the ones that corresponded with the correct pins. I will put the pin out in the description as well as I will try to put a photo of it here in this video during this section. So once you have your breakout cable, what you need to do is you need to plug it into your monitor, obviously. So I've got my breakout cable here. This goes into the monitor input on the chassis, which I'm going to try to do here without getting shocked. You can see it's right there. It's the white connector with the red, blue, and green cables coming out of it. And then next to it, you have a clear connector that's got a, a black cable, which is your ground, 
and then you've got a white cable and that's your sink and it's looped to the negative uh negative horizontal and negative vertical sink so that is all you need to do once you do that you're all set as far as your connectivity everything that's left at this point is software on the raspberry pi that'll get you set up and running so while we're back here just want to show this is the original power supply i did a fuse block uh replacement trying to fight some humbar and i still have this uh little uh power supply back here that i was using to power uh, originally my 16 one board that used to sit right there and then um the gbs uh, 8100 it's on the other side so you know this right here goes up there to hold the pac-man board in still have the pac-man wiring harness here edge connector all of its connections here so you can plug it back in to make it a pac-man very very easily all i'd have to do is reconnect the speaker wires because i did cut those um once i started using the pi and um i would just need to take this tap out that was the tap that i did for the power supply there so if i took that out i'd be fine and this thing would be 100 percent original if i ever got a pac-man board again which it didn't have when i got anyway so with that said let's take a look at the raspberry pi software and see how you get this thing running okay so now you've successfully connected your raspberry pi and now you're ready to do the software so the software configuration is actually very simple once you have the right uh, settings. That was my problem. I kept running into issues. I don't know if it was my monitor specifically that was giving me problems or if it was just something wrong I was doing. I could not figure it out until I finally came across a forum post. Um, I believe it was a guy with like name was like 1500 points and I think it was in um, the arcade controls forum. Um, but he had some settings and I just want to share them here to show how easy this was once I got it going. So what you need to do is you SSH into your Raspberry Pi using Putty or any other client you have. And once you get in, you want to go to the boot folder at the root. So you go to boot and then you're going to want to edit the config.txt file. If you are familiar, familiar with Raspberry Pis, you've probably done this before. Um, just a quick overview. So here you'll see all the different settings. So the settings that I have enabled, I have display splash equals one. So that's disabling the Raspberry Pi splash screen. Um, display rotate two, that's because I'm in a vertical cabinet and I want it to flip that uh, 90 degrees. That way I get that vertical screen. Uh, HDMI safe is disabled. Disable overscan, but then overscan scale is enabled. So I'm not 100% sure on what that is, but I do know that the overscan features are working because my monitor is currently using that um, in order to get the picture to fill the screen properly, um, which this setting saves and everything looks fantastic. Um, I also have, oh, I need to resize one second. There we go. So I also have uh, this setting, which is HDMI ignore edid, and then your hexadecimal code. That right there is showing that it's just video. It's not going to try to push audio out of that um, device. You're forcing your hot plug. That's one. HDMI drive is set to two. Uh, the config HDMI boost, I had it as low as six. Um, I ended up boosting it to 11 just to see if it made a difference as far as um, picture quality of it, like, you know, the colors popping, anything like that. I didn't really notice a difference between 6 or 11. Uh, mine's currently set at 11 right now just because I haven't changed it. Um, maybe start with 6, and if you run into issues, boost it up a little bit. I think the highest you can go is 11 from what I read. Uh, HDMI pixel encoding needs to be set to 2, so that'll give you RGB. And then this is the most important part right here. So you need to use HDMI group one. Um, group one is what you want it to be set to in order to do this. And then I have my mode as group as mode six. I believe I had it set to group eight originally because that's 240p, but then something in attract mode on this build. So this is a RPiCade 3.9 build that I'm using. And when I set the menus in our PiCade, I think it defaulted it to six, but the quality on the screen looks fantastic. Uh, before setting it in attract mode, I was running into issues where I would, um, 
the splash screen for our Picade was like completely stretched off the vertical screen. Now I can actually read it horizontally on the vertical screen when the machine boots up. It says our Picade, it fits in the screen. Um, my marquee images during the screen display, uh, screensaver display are now set properly. So that is also working. Um, and it was really due to this. So I'm going to leave it at HDMI mode six. Um, but I would play around with six or eight, depending on your experience. This is my experience with my K4901. Um, so other than those settings that I just named, which I'm going to copy this and put it in the description. So it's an easy copy and paste. Um, that's it. Once I did that, I rebooted the Pi and I got the picture that I've been showing you guys. Um, that was it. So it was much easier than I thought it was going to be. I ran into a lot of problems originally and I was getting stressed out. But then now that I got it to work, I couldn't be more happy with the image quality I'm getting. All right, so let's get back to the cabinet. So we got our settings, we got our picture. My Pi is set to auto boot into Pac-Man, and this is just the normal slow version of Pac-Man. I just started a two-player game by mistake, but but it's just normal Pac-Man. This is what it boots right into. Picture looks fantastic. It fills the whole screen. You can see like just the quality of everything is so good. I've got a little bit of discoloration at the bottom of the screen. Actually, it looks like it's cleared up. I do have a degaussing issue on this monitor, but that's that's a tube issue. It goes away when I degauss. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of there. I have it configured. You hold player two and press player one, and that kicks us out. So this is our Picade, like I said. It does its quick little scan ROMs. And one of the coolest things I recently discovered was that uh, Fizzle Fiend did a, and I, I think is a, uh, what's his name? Dirt to something. The guy who actually made the Arpicade, and there was another guy as well. Um, they made this arcade SD um, theme for a track mode. Let me turn the light off real quick so it's not getting that glare. So, this theme is awesome. It looks just like the arcade SD, which is like a fantastic interface. I've always loved it. Um, I do have Popeye on here, even though it's a vertical cabinet. I just wanted to check it out. Um, this is only using a four-way joystick, so I'm kind of limiting my options. I do have a trackball, so I can get bowling, stuff like that, a centipede, Congo bongo, dig dug. But as you can see, like, the text looks good. You can read it. The picture quality is really good. These are videos that play after you hover over a game. Every game's got that. Like, the video the video qualities aren't that great, but that's just what it is. But like if I boot Galaga, for instance, I hit player uh, button one, now loading. The game boots right up. And it's, you know, it looks so good. I know these are very primitive games, so saying something looks good is, you know, is it really that big of a difference? I really feel it is. Because the just seeing the shape of the ship, seeing the scan lines, the pixels, everything, just the colors pop off the screen. They didn't used to do that. So I'm extremely happy with this. It was something that I could do for the cost of an old VGA cable I had laying around. So if you have the ability to do it, do it. Uh, some of the settings I was talking about earlier with the track mode, if you hit F4 on your keyboard, F4 on your keyboard will take you to this service menu. So this is one thing I, I need to figure out how to rotate this menu because this menu currently always displays horizontally. But the setting that I did earlier was I changed it to low resolution vertical. And when I did that, everything improved. Because before I did that, I think this is when I was on uh, mode eight. This text, you couldn't read. It was like missing half of each letter. But then once I changed it to low res, rebooted, then that Arpicade logo was like in the middle. I could actually see it. Um, and then all the text started showing up nice and clean. Um, that's just that little thing you're seeing is just because my camera is not adjusting to the refresh rate of the monitor. Um, but I'm, I'm super happy with this. This thing's so nice now. Um, and I really just wanted to share this with other people because I have 
been so frustrated trying to get something nice. And uh, it wasn't really an issue for me until I um, bought an alternative product. So as you can see there, now it reads, it used to be stretched across the screen where you could just see like the PICA and everything else was just stretched off the screen because my resolutions were off. Um, but I bought an alter alternative solution, um, alternative solution, I can't talk. Um, and that was the Raspberry Jamma or Picade, and that's running on my TMNT, which you can hear in the background of this entire video just because I wanted to annoy you, like to make you feel like you were in a 90s arcade. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so this I bought and restored. It was a Mortal Kombat 3 that was, um, you know, converted turtles. As soon as I saw the single speaker display, the double coin door, I knew it was a Ninja Turtles. I knew I had to bring it back to what it was. So uh, with that said, I couldn't justify spending $300 on just a TMNT board. So that's when I looked into the Raspberry Jamma. It was about 200 bucks with the four player adapter, um, which I feel was totally worth it. But what made me go on this journey of figuring out this new alternative method was the picture quality on this when I hooked it up was so good. This, this monitor is a K7000 that I haven't touched. Um, it luckily just worked. It looks awesome. I've done zero cap work to it. That's usually the first thing I always do when I get a new cabinet, but this one just looks great. All I had to do was adjust it slightly, um, turn on the brightness, get the colors, you know, boosted up, but it looks awesome. So uh, because it looks so good and I started researching, researching about the RPiCade and was seeing that this board basically has the VGA to HDMI adapter on the back of it. And that's when I read that the Pi can push out these resolutions, but how to get it to work was my biggest problem. So hopefully now, if you're looking for something similar, you can do this. I've given you all the steps to do it. If you have any questions, please leave a comment, shoot me a message, and we will get you set up. This is a great solution. Not to say that the, ras the uh, Raspberry Jamma isn't. That's an awesome, out of the box, straightforward solution. Uh, there's not much configuration you need to do, really. Get your image from the RPiCade forums, download the 3.9 image, toss it on your SD card for your Raspberry Pi, and you should be up and running. Um, just, you know, it should get you to this point. Uh, you can tell your, you know, you can tell what resolution you're using and everything once you get in. But that's really it. It's, it's a very good product. I just personally didn't want to buy one for this cabinet that didn't have a JAMA adapter already. And I already had an iPad 2 that already had its, um, you know, connected to the Raspberry Pi and I already had the trackball and everything else. So for me, using this VGA breakout cable was the best solution. Another solution you can do is go with a J-Pack and a J-Pack will supply you with the same uh, connection. It'll give you the VGA input that then you can output to your Wells gardener monitor um, or any monitor for that through JAMA. So that would take this same same exact setup but just eliminate the VGA breakout cable. You would just get the JPack, plug it into your JAMA harness if you have one, and then you would um, you'd be good to go essentially. You just have to do the Raspberry Pi configurations and then you should be up and running. That's actually another post I was reading about um, or actually it was a video I found on YouTube that a guy did that which sent me down this road. So I just bypassed the J-Pack altogether and bypassed the JAMA harness and we're good to go. So hopefully this is informative for you. Like I said, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you liked what you saw, leave a thumbs up. If you wanna see more in the future as I do more things, subscribe to me please. And thank you for watching.